newzealandmusician.co.nz We featured Michal Martinuk as part of After Hours a couple of years ago or so when their album Odyssey came out. So I was kind of curious to catch up to talk to him about his new solo album called Nothing to Prove, which was released in August last year. And um, the internet tells me it's doing rather well in Poland, mm. um, and being in lots of uh, end of your top 10 lists. That must be really oh, cool. Yeah, that's great news. Yeah. It's coming. How, have, you, have you counted about uh, um, the th things that are the, the reviews and mm. I think there's quite a few from from states as well oh and um, because I was there in New York and just kind of promoting it myself a little bit and 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 yeah in Poland because I was doing gigs in Europe and I'm from Poland so so it was easier to to get in touch with yeah. National pride. Yeah. Um, before we get into it, uh, first of all, thanks so much for coming in. It's, it's so awesome to have you. Um, how did you fit into our New Zealand musical landscape? Um, um, other than after hours, uh, you mean when I f came here? Um, Twelve years yeah, ago. Yeah, sort or? of who you mm. play with. Because when you, when I look at your CV yeah. for New Zealand stuff, it's uh, it's it's really pretty good. The people you played with. And well, I try to be part of the scene from from the day one, and and I went to university, so I met a lot of people. I met Nathan Haynes, who was teaching me back then, who introduced me to a lot of people, and um, Dixon Nacy, who was uh, one of the the guys who taught taught me at the beginning as well who got me to play in his band and and uh, I met Tama Waipara who's on the album as well through through those guys so yeah it's just you know like once you start then then and people like you you you, you play more and more every day and yeah, it was busy back in the day I was playing a lot with what no longer uh yeah it's kind of um yeah it's a bit quiet that's why I'm trying to go to to Europe and and do a bit of more jazz over there and, and I come back here every year uh, for summer and, and I've got a studio in Ponsonby where I write music and practice so it works for me so yeah I enjoy the, the, the weather in the summer here and, and do music in summer over there that, that's that been happening for the last two years so. sounds like a like a bit of a dream oh yeah so you mentioned you studied at the University of Auckland um, what exactly did you did you study I did the Bachelor of Music so I did piano with Kevin Field and um, uh, did you specialize in anything particular other than piano? I was just just piano, so a Bachelor of Music is just, yeah. Or so you just pick one, you don't say, I want to go in this direction with it? Or? Uh, no, no, piano. So, so we mm. basically focus on, on playing piano and um, there was uh, different lectures as well, big band arrangement and um, yeah, a lot of cool stuff. But piano, I wanted to, to have classes with Kevin and, um, and get best at it, so yeah. So would you say you're you're more of a classical pianist, or or because what I know of you is jazz? Yeah, well, I did twelve years of classical music at the start, so definitely there's some classical music in, in me, and yeah, I like to go back to it, practice it a little bit, and and listen to it a little bit sometimes. But so yeah, I think it's very similar thing actually, jazz and classical, and you have all those guys now coming out at Brad Meldau and like just you, you know they're all recording classical stuff now mm -hmm. and, and working classical so so there's a lot of similarities so maybe both uh, I would like to say just always feels like on a global stage you kind of have to make a bit of a decision what you want your profile to be as a as a musician who specialized in one instrument yeah well I, you know I don't like to be just a jazz guy you know I've done this after hours thing and it's more groovy and more more let's say fun well jazz is fun but it's more serious so I, I would like you know I like to do a few different things and I like to have this after hours that keeps me you know going and then I've got this jazz thing when I want to sit and, and compose something more serious so so I don't want to be categorized and just jazz only so whatever I, I'm just a musician I, I you know even I play some other instruments I play a bit of drums I love playing synth bass and producing a little bit so you know just music so it comes out in different ways, I guess. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now, Nothing to Prove is the name of the album, and I thought that was quite an interesting choice because I feel, as, I'd say, especially as, a, as somebody who learned the craft of being a musician in some shape or form, um, you have to stay relevant and you have to prove yourself all the time to stay yeah. in the business. Yeah. Um, so um, I was wondering about the title of the album. Yeah. So that was quite important to me uh, because that was kind of a break point. Um, I was trying to always trying to prove myself and other people that I'm, I'm good enough and that was kind of um, 
you know, stopping me from from really letting myself be, you know, better and just myself. Because yeah, I always had the. Um, I was lucky to play with older guys, older musicians, more experienced, and I felt like am I good enough to play to play with them, you know, in my day for a reason or just nice to me. And you know, Nathan even told me once, you know, you're here because because you're the man. You, you don't need to prove anything, you know. And I was like, and it took me a while, but this is a, just a statement to remind myself that I don't have to prove anything, you know. I'm just myself. If someone doesn't like it, then it's cool. If if you know, then, but uh, this is who I am, and. Now I've got nothing to prove, and I, you know I have to remind myself not to try and like play the solo to impress someone that just walked in or something. Just just be myself, and so yeah. Do you have something that like because nearly every musician I know has imposter syndrome, which is kind of what you mentioned, where you think, yeah, what yeah. am I doing here? You know, yeah, am yeah, I good yeah. enough? Um, do you have a thought or something or a strategy that that makes you snap out of it? If if that's how you feel. You know, for a it's moment? just like in, in life. You like you have to teach yourself not to yeah. think about you know negative stuff or, or something you know I'm always trying to to stay focused and and just relax you know maybe sometimes they take a long deep breath before you start playing and you know it's kind of like a bit of meditation or something um, mm. um, just to just to stop the thoughts and just let it happen you know on the spot mm. I think that's the best way to, to play music you know not overanalyze it just just let it go obviously you have to have um, all the skills and stuff to work hard but when when it's actually playing time then maybe let it go and see what happens yeah i guess you've just yeah. got to trust yeah yeah all of the otherwise it's too many thoughts and you're stressing out and and he's like you know overdoing it or or something or you get stuck mm -hmm. um now the making of the album can you tell us a little more about it i mean you've touched on it here and there um we've got a lot of talent here in new zealand but most of it you moved Poland and you just gave me off camera the reason and, and I, I thought that was quite interesting so you, yeah um, can you tell me a little about that um, so it was a bit expensive to do it here to be honest and um, and I had a deal in Poland and they offered me a studio for free uh, and I yeah I went and and I got a bunch of my friends that I used to play with and and started the album over there but we finished it here um, Yost from the big pop studios helped me and um, we did some some production here, and I was mixing it with a guy from Poland, but we're using a studio in New Zealand. So, so I wanted to, I wanted the album to be part of both because I'm from Poland and and I started over there, but I live here for 12 years now, and you know, so Tama Waipara and Miguel Fuentes, who was also on the on, on the previous record, are both on the record. So, I'm glad that at least those two guys made it to the finals and you know I mean I'm still hoping to, to make another album just purely here because my trio uh, Ron Samson and Cameron Mercado they, they both here and I, I hope we can get the funding or something to record the next record here I loved that when I looked at when I researched your album and I saw little videos of it that everybody was fairly young and and you know when you say jazz um, at least at least my, well I'm, I'm probably similar age to you um, but but you think oh jazz that's all the old people and then it's just such a joy to hear that sort of jazz um, being played and by crowd. young enthusiastic crowd um, yeah. um, do you do you think jazz will will keep rejuvenating itself or well I, I think maybe there's not so much of it here uh, but I, when I went to Poland, I couldn't believe it. There was just so much jazz everywhere, and young people play jazz, and young people go to listen to jazz. And obviously, older people always uh, have have a taste for it. But um, yeah, I think you know when when we spread the music, I, I try to play jazz to to people that never listen to jazz, and you know, like it's 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 about sharing and and showing people if they never heard jazz because there's not much jazz on the radio here or something. You just you know give them a CD, like you know, invite them to. That's um, how how I wanted to to start with after hours. So it's it's a little bit of jazz, but something else like a bridge to let's say maybe more um, mm. jazz stuff. You know, I mean, yeah, I think young guys getting into it now, and and it's good to see. And I'm always gonna try and bring the young guys to 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 play together because um, it's different energy, definitely. Oh yeah, it's great. It's it's, it's it felt really like it sounds really fresh. Yeah, to yeah, me. yeah. Like for the. For the nerds, for the jazz nerds out there, um, if they haven't heard your album yet, mm. who do you think will enjoy uh, the new album? Enjoy? Well, I can like tell what, what music I... music would they like that, that that would help them get into yours? Yeah, well, I, I can only t 
tell you what, what I like and what I was inspired by when I mm-hmm. was writing this music. So definitely Pat Metheny group was always kind of my, even he's a um, guitarist, I love his piano player, Lila Mays, and it's very classical as well because he plays a lot with, with chords and, and stuff, so, so anyone who listens to that kind of music um, will definitely get into it. It's not really jazzy, I would say, there's no swing and stuff, it's, it's more from someone said in an inter um, review that it was almost romantic <laughs> and stuff. Mm. So so it's quite, yeah. I, I I'm trying to do something new as well. So hopefully you know it's it's something that that people never heard before. But it's a mix of of things. So Pat Metheny, some some jazz that you know that I've been listening to, and and some new stuff, uh, and some maybe Polish. Um, taste of, of, of Polish music, old music, you know, because I've been listening to it and the boys definitely brought something to it. So, yeah, it's hard, hard to, to describe it. I don't yeah, like to describe it. I find it hard. Like, personally, I pass on jazz reviews because I feel you need such a massive breadth of knowledge mm. oh, yeah. to, to, to comfortably talk about yeah, jazz yeah, yeah. in a way that there's not somebody going, what are they talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm a bit shy about that, but I find your, your, your music quite approachable as somebody who does like jazz but mm. doesn't know a lot yeah, yeah. I find it fairly easy to listen to um, did you did you keep an did you how do you keep the balance between wanting something that people will actually want to listen to but also sort of pleasing the yeah. geekier side well it is it is hard but I'm always trying to just play music from my heart I'm not mm. trying to to sell it or anything you know like it is quite easy listening jazz let's say because um This is what I, I've been listening to so many different mm-hmm. genres. I've been playing, you know, grooves, reggae, R&B here, and I've got all those, all those things in me. And and jazz is just a part of it. So I'm not mm-hmm. trying to be, you know, American jazz piano mm-hmm. pianist or something. And <laughs> I just mix everything I like, you know. And I like some cheesy stuff, some say, you know. And mm-hmm. I don't mind. And I'm trying to be myself, and and that's the main go for me you know and if someone likes it that's, that's great but if, if, if it's not jazzy enough or it's too jazzy then there's so much music out there you know I'm never gonna be you know pushing anyone to, to listen to this because you know because I think it's great it's just what I do and yeah. so you've got um, a lot of dates overseas coming up to play and why I this video should hopefully still be relevant to watch in a year or so but I think it's quite cool that you play at places that you're going yeah. to play at places where people don't usually play so what's up next for you Rick? well the next thing is the Java Jazz Festival in Jakarta and it's the second time we're going to be playing there with New Zealand trio with Ron Sampson and Cameron MacArthur and my friend Kuba Skowronski who plays on the record and who's living in Bali now so he's just going to meet us there so that's beginning of March And the other cool thing is um, they invited me to Europe, and to to Szczecin, and it's uh, my hometown where mm-hmm. I was born. Mm-hmm. And they have a jazz festival, so they invited me because I'm from, from there and they have a big festival. Kenny Garrett plays there, you know, Erika Bader is going to be there. So this is like, you know, special because it's my hometown and all my friends and my family um, will come to that. So that's end of March, so I'll be away for March. And we got some dates in Malaysia and Indonesia as well. So. Oh, that's so yeah, exciting, cool. yeah, yeah. Oh, that must make you so proud that they say he's ours. Yeah, well, I'm just happy that uh, that's you know that all the hours and and everything I put into it that I can play. I mean, there's not much money coming out of it, but at least I can go and and show my music, you know, and because that's the most important thing. I want to mm-hmm. share it with with people, and it's nice mm-hmm. to play live live gigs. Oh, fantastic, yeah. cool. So, um, where can people have a listen to your album? Uh, it's on Spotify, it's on iTunes, um, there's stuff on YouTube, uh, and yeah, you can get the record. I've got it on vinyl as well. Uh, yeah, I think Google will tell you. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. Google. Yeah. Cool, thank you so much oh, for coming you in for today. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks. Have a lovely day.